Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about consultancy teams, metrics and incentives. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, in one of your previous videos, you stated that it is very hard to get some consultants to be dedicated and take ownership over a project. I had this idea where I, I was thinking maybe there's a way to do this. Maybe if we offer them money to deliver on certain metrics like fixing bugs, for example, that could erase their incentive. What do you feel about this? And the short answer is good God, no. Don't do that. Never, ever, ever introduce a monetary reward system for people just doing the daily job in, or certain part of the daily job. Let me explain. So this method has been tried and it has crashed and burned for pretty, I mean, even Microsoft has tried this and they, they, they it completely failed. The, the reason why this is so dangerous and especially when it comes to bugs is because if you, and this is not true for everybody, but it is true enough that quite a lot of people might, there are situations where this could work, but it's so risky to do this, not only like long-term risky, that you don't even, you shouldn't even attempt it, I would argue. It's, it's not for in-house staff in this manner. The reason is very simple because if you say that to your uh, to your employees, especially if they're consultants and they don't really, and if you don't have like an office culture where you get people invested into each other, where they're basically just there to for a payday, well, if you give them a money money incentive to deliver on certain metrics, what do you think that they're going to prioritize? Well, that's what you want, right? You want them to prioritize what? You want them to prioritize how many bugs they fix. Well, that's going to end up with them spending more time looking for bugs and in really silly cases, they're going to, you know, they're just going to sit and fix small issues. They're going to spend all their time from, uh, fixing like pointless little trivial things. Oh, there's a CSS pixel off here or they're going to introduce a bug and then fix it and then get paid for it. Like there's going to be all of these workarounds, like just as really greasy sleazeball uh, accountants or lawyers trying to get around the laws. They're just trying to find loopholes to exploit the system somehow. That's what you're introducing if you do this. Where <clears throat> you might find that, oh, I haven't shipped a single money-making feature in months because my team is all focusing on finding bugs with the existing features. And that's the beautiful part about bugs. You can sit forever and do it. You can just sit there and I, you mean shit, I could, it's a full-time job to just sit and do QA work over and over and over with the motivation that if I find a bug, I'm going to get some extra money. And you're still doing your job technically. And then there might be other people within the company who don't think this way, but get really, really frustrated that, oh, all of a sudden, all these, because there's a range of people working in your company. Some people are very dedicated and really want to do well. And some people are kind of, ah, I'm just here for the money. And if you want them to be able to work together, imagine what's going to happen with the people who are motivated if the people who are not as motivated just don't give a fuck about the, their part of the workflow, workload and just sit there and try to fix bugs, for example. It's going to poison the culture really, really quickly. I, I have seen examples of not where this, this level of extreme, uh, not something this extreme with actual cash rewards, but I've seen other incentive systems been introduced where you have things like the employee of the month, you have reward, some type of physical reward, like you get some prizes or something like that for doing certain types of work. And in some cases, I was at one job where the, we kind of, where people got some bonuses and be, different people got different bonuses. And it showed how much of a, like people started, well, it was, it, we could save the situation, but it was not a good thing. It, it is people, people are jealous. People are jealous like fuck. And they feel like, oh, if my coworker is getting that amount, I'm better than that coworker. Why is that person getting more money than I am? Like it's very rare that people have a sort of, 
oh, I'm fine with whatever I get and it's fine whatever they get. Like there, it's it's not a good mix, this thing. And the same thing goes for other metrics. I mean, I re- saw a TikTok not that long ago, which is very good, that also talks about microservices. And this was at IBM. So IBM launched a new architecture a while back where microservices architecture for their main website or their, or their reselling website. And the load time, of, the initial load time of their main web page was nine minutes. Now, the person, one of the architects behind this, who, who was hosting this tech talk, explained that the reason that they found they found out that the, they didn't find out that there were performance issues until the launch date was because each team was evaluated on their own SLAs and metrics or KPIs and things like that. They had their own box. They were working as a silo, and the only thing they cared about was to meet these specific requirements on their on their part of the system. Their services needed to have a certain response time, and etc. 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 Which meant that the only thing they cared about was their own column in the evaluation sheet. That was it. They didn't care about the company, they didn't care about any other teams, they cared about my system needs to be in the green on the the money bag people's uh, spreadsheet, because they have a spreadsheet. They all have a spreadsheet, they love spreadsheets. And when you do that, when you introduce such an idea, then all ownership is gone, all like it becomes a cutthroat business. It's very similar to the employee of the month. Microsoft did a similar thing where they had a ranking of the top performers within the company and you can imagine how that went. Well, if you have a ranking where the low performers are kind of in the risk zone and the top performers are being praised all the time, how much incentive does that give people for collaboration, helping people out and doing a really good job and focusing on teamwork and like making things, products that are really, really well made? Well, it doesn't. It, it, it basically creates a backstabbing type of nature, environment where people, they stab each other in the back. And that's a big problem because teamwork is critical in software development. Now. If you are going to give an incentive system for monetary incentive system, you should, if at all possible, consider something like a bounty system. Now that that is a very very good thing. Like uh, there are very nice bounty systems that you can go and have a look at. I think it's Hacker One. It's one of the most famous websites for this, where you create cash rewards for finding different severity or critical issues with your system so that freelance testers and hackers and people like that can help you without you having to spend all that extra time yourself on finding these sorts of issues and then you give them some money i mean the money that you're paying them is a fraction of if they find something serious it's a fraction of what you would have been had to pay if there was an exploit that somebody could use right and your employees if they want to make some extra cash on the side, well, then just tell them about the bounty system. They know the system better than anybody. If they want to spend some of their own free time, maybe earn a few extra bucks, then it's perfect. They have an upper hand, most likely, on quite a few of the other freelancers because they know the system right. So there you have a way to create an incentive system, but you still don't pay them more than what they're actually paid to do their job. Because the only proven way to this day that works when it comes to giving incentive to people as software developers in order to do a good job is to create a sensation of ownership. They have to care about the project and the way that you do this is very simple. They need to care about each other, they need to have a good office culture and they need to feel like they can make decisions on behalf of the project. Now this is very difficult and very risky if you're working with consultants such as in this scenario because if you're going to give them all this freedom you have to trust them as the stakeholder, you have to trust the developers because if you don't trust the developers and or if they are untrustworthy, they're gonna end up creating a really shitty system. And I have seen, I'm sorry to say, many, many, many consultants because that's the problem with consultants there. It's, you evaluate them in a very short period of time and then they're kind of just doing their thing. And it's very hard to tell if they're good or bad unless you have some technical person who can kind of oversee the whole situation. As I said to this subscriber, I said that had I myself managed this team, if I had been the tech lead or like some worked as part of this team, I would have felt completely secure because I know how to make them happy. I know what good code looks like and I know how to get there. I can, I can influence the situation. But if you are 
I don't know if you're a, if you're hiring a bunch of consultants, the best way for you and the best way if you don't have some trusted person within that team or you have a manager that you truly trust, the best way for you to make sure that you're they're doing what they're supposed to be doing is to just hire consultants that you have had rec- recommended to you. You need to find some part business partner or a, comp- a competitor or like whoever like someone who can vouch for these consultants and say that they do real good work because if you hire unproven unreached researched like consultants it's basically a computer a complete gamble you have no idea what they're going to output so what i want you to take away from this is that a good general rule of thumb is that if you want to create incentive and ownership, a sensation of ownership in developers, regardless of if it's in-house or if it is consultants, never, ever, ever get to a point where the only thing they care about is like one specific metric, such as, I don't know, how fast is the, how, what's the latency on the network? What's the bug, bug report? Like how many issues do you have? Things like that. Because if you do, you, I can promise you, especially if you pay the money to fix these things, the entire value system will go from a holistic perspective to do the best thing that can be done for the system as a whole to just focusing on that one thing. It's like going to a doctor where they they get paid extra for cert, for certain medications that they prescribe. Well, they're going to fucking prescribe that medicine. They're not going to fix your problem. They're going to try to push to give you that medicine instead of all the other, and the other things that you might be wrong with you fixing that. So that is the focus you need to create that sensation of ownership and the only way to do that is to give them a good office culture pay them well for doing a really good job and make sure that they have autonomy and they can influence their own work process now the issue with this is as i said that's the problem because when you're dealing with consultants you don't unless you can trust them it's it's a gamble. You don't know how what's, what you're going to get. And that's always the risk with working with consultants. So it's important that if you're hiring consultants or if you're working with them, that you can trust them, either by having some person that manages them that you trust or being able to get a recommendation or something like that. Otherwise, you're pretty much just, you're, yeah, you have no idea what you're going to get. Have a great day.